All right, hello and welcome. I'm your host, Reverend Smash Tree Walker of Jordan Standing Oak, and you're with me once again for another episode of A Pagan Perspective here on YouTube. And we're going to start our very first uh, deal in the realm of divination. And tonight we're going to talk about um, a form of divination that isn't known by very many people. It's called smoking the billet. And uh, what you need for uh, this operation and divination is, uh, for one, you need a candle. Two, a three by five uh, note card. And for this operation, you want to use the blank side of the card, right here. Um, also, to uh, just have a general uh, good bit of energy, I always keep a, a piece of quartz on my table um, to, you know, balance out the energies of what I'm trying to accomplish with this. And uh, this was done uh, in the early medieval times. And, and things like that. And it's almost like a uh, different version of kind of like reading tea leaves. Um, and we're going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit of a demonstration. First, as with all things, you want to be very careful with fire. Uh, you want to be close to something to uh, put out the fire in case you have a mishap. Also, whenever doing this operation, you don't want to hold this thing really close to the fire because what's going to happen it's going to burn up and you're not going to get the reading. And basically what you're want to, going to want to do is uh, think of your question, think of what you want to get answers to, and then, oh, I like that, that was a very cool candle flame. And then you'll hold it two to three inches, about three inches above the tip of your um, candle flame. And you're going to concentrate on the answers of what you want. a little bit closer you just want to be careful if the flame decides to swell also you want to be careful not to burn yourself because this candle is putting up a lot of heat and you can try different candles sometimes these paraffin candles don't put off enough smoke to really do anything. And as you do this, you want to keep your mind in on the question that you have at hand. You want to be really careful. You can switch to the other hand. And basically what you want to do is to stop is whenever you think that you have asked and, and just, you know, the, the, there's an appropriate time, you'll know when to stop. Um, I don't think there are too many pagans that do this anymore. This is a more, of a, a more obscure form of divination along with uh, the pendulum and some other things and here in a minute uh, we're going to be moving on to another video that I'm going to put out for you guys. Uh, let's see how this works. Really keep going. Not really putting too much on there yet. Close to the heat there because I don't want it to catch on fire. And basically, the, the symbols that you may see, you could see an anchor, you could see uh, a bird, you could see just any symbol that uh, can be used uh, in a, div a divination. I'm trying to do this without burning the card. Sometimes I think it's better to use a little bit heavier cardstock. Now oh, we're starting to get a little bit of something. 
sometimes you need to really work with it. You need to hold it a little bit higher. You see it's starting to come through. And I don't want this card to catch fire. But this is something, as with any divination, you want to practice and, and work at it as much as possible. And the card is starting to get hot. You can see a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a smoke ring thing on it. But you have to work at it. You might take longer than five minutes to actually do this. This is a longer. This is a, a form of fire crying. And when we come back, we're going to go to the next form of divination that we're going to work with is uh, divining with stones. So just hang out with me for a little bit and we'll get everything set up and we'll be right back after this to get you moving on to the next form of divination which is we're going to be doing divination with stones here on Pagan Perspectives. All right, we're back. You're with me, your host, Reverend Spanish Tree Walker, New Order Standing Oak, and we're talking about divination in tonight. We just finished talking about smoking the billet, which is a form of fire scrying, using a candle and a card and getting uh, impressions burnt in the smoke on the back. It makes it easier to uh, continue on with the divination. So maybe one day I'll be able to get something better, excuse me, and do a full. Uh, divination with smoking the billet but now we're going to talk about one of probably one of the easiest forms of well not one of the easiest forms but probably one of the the most beneficial forms of divination for anybody um, that is out there that's pagan and you know we're so used to uh, runes and these other things uh, tarot and stuff like that but sometimes the the best that you can have uh, for some pretty powerful uh, divinations and some readings for yourself and, and on life situations and things like that is simply some stones. These can be stones that you gather out at the river, uh, stones that have been given to you at rituals, uh, stones that you have bartered for at festivals and things like that. And um, any stone that has meaning to you uh, can be used in stone divination. And for one, it doesn't take a whole lot. Um, you can use as many stones as you want to, or you can use as few stones as you want to. One of the things that I keep in mind whenever I do uh, put together a um, bag is I try to keep as many different colors as possible that could go to different things like green, blue, purple, red, white, clear, uh, uh, different things like that that have different meanings in themselves and the type of stones. If you know some of the magical properties of various stones and minerals, then that can also add to uh, the reading, like an example. Gold is soft. Iron is hard. Um, hematite is, self -heal is a self-healing stone. Um, uh, turquoise comes from uh, the, the, the uh, west of our country and things like that. So there are some stones that have um, their own vibrations because of where they're from and things like that and all you really need is something simple like this little uh, crown royal bag um, it has plenty of room to hold as many stones as you want one thing that uh, you can do also is you can work with however many different uh, spreads you want you can do actual spreads you can do a single stone pull you can pull uh, six or seven different stones so one of the things that I like to do is uh, think of a question or think of a situation that's in my mind and you can take and uh, kind of rustle up your bag there and then shake it around and pull a stone out and I pulled out for this stone I pulled a purple stone and when I see the color purple I think of things that are higher higher vibration spiritual uh, things that are almost uh, angelic 
and stuff like that. So if you have a spirit guide, also uh, whenever you're doing divination of any kind, if you have guides, animal familiars, uh, uh, any beings like that that you work with in general, make sure that you tune in with them too at the time that you're doing the reading because it helps to uh, augment it. It helps you to get a clearer um, idea of what the reading is. So like with this stone pole, when I see purple, and the one thing is everybody associates uh, different meanings to different stones. What I associate to one stone isn't going to be what you're going to associate to your stone. And uh, in, as far as the practice uh, of, of stone divination, pull a stone every day or pull a, a three stone um, uh, reading uh, every morning when you get up just to see what your day is going to be like. Um, you can also use the stones as a form of meditation. You can take each stone and meditate on its meaning, meditate on its significance, meditate <coughs> excuse me, on the spirit that's within the stone. And uh, stones are versatile in so many different uh, methods. You can do water scrying with stones where you place the stones in a vessel of water and you remove them and uh, do readings that way. So there are many different variations of things that you can do with stones. So, like I said, for the purple, I give it more of a higher vibration, more of an angelic spiritual vibration. And then we go into this peach moss, well, this peach agate, almost like a... Uh, it's not a moonstone, but it's just an agate of its own, uh, like a, a rosy quartz type thing. Rose quartz, I think of the, uh, feminine energy. I think of almost like a fairy type energy and, and things like that. So any kind of associations with fairies, uh, with the female divine, the goddess, that's what I think uh, whenever I see this uh, rosy quartz here. Set that down right there. We'll make a couple more pulls just to give you some more examples. Then we pull green. Now this here is a green uh, agate. Big nice stone right there. Just beautiful. It's awesome. I love larger chunks of stone. And this one's beautiful. I've had this one for about 20 years now. And it just has a great energy. When I think of this I think of uh, uh, the green man. I think of forests. I think of uh, green energy. I think of money. I think of uh, just a, a green, I see green is healing. There's a healing energy about green. So any green stones, agates, and this is um, just a very strong high vibrational stone. I like it and this is definitely one that I'm going to keep in this bag. This bag here is what I use for uh, stone readings and I like this one very much. So, And like I say, you can put whatever stone you want into it and give it your meanings, but you know, um, it doesn't matter. It does matter that you put stones in there and practice because you know at the beginning sometimes it might be confusing, you know, and it, your stones aren't necessarily going to mean the same thing every single time. That's the thing about intuitive versus against readings that have a set uh, meaning. I think a lot of times it's better for pagans to work on the intuitive side of things, to work with our guides and kind of go outside the norm because sometimes we get uh, better results. Uh, we understand a lot more. And so with uh, these kind of readings, um, you know, it's where you go with your gut. These are the things of the earth. These are energies of the earth. These are beings of the earth. So we want to uh, work with them, uh, you know, as closely as we can. Now the next stone, this is one of my favorites. We're gonna kind of clean it off here. We have a very, very, very nice piece of cat's eye. And when I think of cat's eye, I think of not just cats, but I think of fast moving energy. I think of, of the unknown. I think of, of just uh, something coming in your life. Um, not necessarily uh, good or bad. There's no good or bad connotation with uh, cat's eye or tiger eye. But the thing about that is, to me, I think of that the intensity of the energy that you have with a piece of cat's eye or, uh, or tiger eye stone is just very intense. Whenever you pull a piece of this in a stone reading, 
um, I think that there is going to be uh, some some fast moving things happening. So that's one reason why uh, I put this into my stone bag. And we'll pull two more pieces and then I've got some stuff I want to tell you about that's going to be happening with the channel. Um, here's another example. We have a piece of quartz crystal. Very nice quartz point. And this is conduit. Conduit for energy. Um, a focus. And I believe that whenever you pull a piece of quartz that you need to focus. That there's some energy that you need to direct like a laser beam to a situation, to a relationship, to your job, to whatever your question is about. So I believe that whenever you pull a piece of quartz like this, um, that there is a need for focus. So uh, that's why I keep that in my bag. And then the last piece, I am going to search this one out. Give me just a second here. There it is. I have this beautiful tiny piece. See if I can get it in the light there a little bit. Uh, just beautiful hematite. And hematite is just it's so, it's so liquid. It's so metallic. It's so flowing. Whenever I pull a piece of hematite, it's a self-healing stone. And I think that, um, that because of the flow, the, the, the liquidity of it, um, it's close to being like a water element stone to me. Um, it, it just, it says there are things that, are, that you need to work on, but you can heal yourself. That things will flow together, that things will work out. So that's why I have, I've always have a, a piece of um, hematite in there. And there are, are red stones. Red stones, when you pull a red stone, could mean energy, could mean blood, could mean strength. Uh, a blue, a full blue stone uh, dealing with the water, could deal with a trip on a boat. Um, whatever associations you give to the stone, that's what the stones are going to mean for you. And um, one, actually two books that I recommend um, are uh, Scott Cunningham's Crystal Gem and Metal Magic. A lot of, of, of great information there about each kind of stone, about each of its magical properties. And if you really over, you know, look them over, you'll also find a lot of information there um, about... Uh, you know what they can be used for in divination. Also, um, there are other um, books that deal with crystals and things that are out there that you can find that will give you more information about uh, other uh, crystal types uh, besides a straight quartz crystal, um, because there's many uh, uh, watermelon tourmaline and some of these different things. Um, you, there's nothing that says you can't use a multi-striated stone with different colors in your divinations and the main thing is you know there's a lot of people that are afraid to do divinations they're afraid to you know work with the stones and things like that and this is your energy it's another thing before you work with your stones the main thing that you want to do is cleanse them by running them under uh, clear water uh, placing them in a dish outside during a full moon uh, you know just whatever is prescribed in your tradition and your work Cleanse them, cleanse them regularly, and use them. Your stones will gather their own energies, um, and they will work for you. And your intuition, uh, in, in, in your mind, and how you work with your guides and, and your uh, power animals and these different things, is what's all going to come together, going to sync together, to give you uh, insight, spiritual insight, into what your, uh, uh, your life, your friends, and your family's life are all about. So, readings in the morning, pull a stone, pull two or three stones if you feel so inclined. Um, you can do readings for your friends. Also, there is a method where you take uh, like a, a piece of cardboard and you write out zones of like uh, family life, job, different things, and then you set the stones out on them and you see what each zone of... And it's easy to do. So that's another thing. Also, there is the astrological method of placing each stone in an astrological house and using that correspondence astrologically along with the uh, divination meaning that you've given to the stones and see how it works through each 
of the houses in your uh, in your chart and in general in the wheel of the zodiac itself. All right, so that is just a little bit. I'm not going to give you a whole big spill about all this. What we're doing with this divination is just giving you little ideas here that you can use to you know uh, excite your imagination to find interest in various and, and sundry different types of divination and so far today we have worked with the uh, uh, smoking the billet and we've also done the uh, stones. What we're going to be doing next is um, here within the next few days I'm going to have a video up dealing with cardomancy. We're going to be talking about uh, tarot. We're going to be talking about other tarot like decks that have 78 cards. We're going to deal with oracle decks that aren't necessarily uh, geared to being a full 78 card tarot deck. We're going to deal with um, uh, the spreads. We're going to deal with these more uh, on a pagan basis. We're not going to go so much into learning the meanings of the cards. We are going to learn the meanings of some of the cards. But we're going to learn more how to meditate with these. We're going to learn how to work with them in ritual and things like that. So be prepared for that. And also, in one of our next videos, we're going to be doing uh, dream interpretation. We're going to talk about dream interpretation, and we're going to do some dream interpretation. And this is where you come in. Uh, if you've had a dream that you have had recently or in the past, and you would uh, like to have um, it interpreted and done on the show, on the channel, then just send me an email to sylvanus93, that's S-Y-L-V-A-N-U-S, 93 at hotmail.com with the description of your dream and I will take that description of what you give me of the dream and we'll do the video for the show and I will give you some of the tenets of where dream interpretation comes from and we will do the interpretation of your dream and also divination video we've got a lot more coming up uh, during the week uh, and the weeks to come and we're going to be talking about druidry we're going to be talking about traditions of the craft We've got a whole lot of stuff coming up and a lot of talk about uh, some of the holidays, magical practices. We've got a whole big spiel of stuff coming out for you guys. And that's what I like about this channel. This is a pagan channel for pagans out there. And I just want to thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'm your host, Reverend Stanis Tree Walker. The Order is standing out here on A Pagan Perspective on YouTube saying blessings of the old gods to you. And we'll see you next time.